Today, let's continue our study on praying with purpose as we look at the 10 reasons in the Gospel of Luke why Jesus prayed. We've seen the first two reasons. We learned, first of all, that he prayed to prepare himself for his calling as we see him praying at the baptism in the Jordan River. The second reason he prayed was to overcome temptation, to prepare himself for life's battles. Third of all, we learn that Jesus prayed to manage life's demands. Luke's gospel tells us, Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Luke 5, verses 15 through 17. The demands of life increase with time and responsibilities. As Jesus' ministry was growing, so were the demands. More people heard about him. The fame of Jesus spread everywhere. People wanted to hear him, teach the word of God. Sometimes they were facing great need in their lives, illnesses, and they heard that Jesus was a healer. Luke tells us that the two main reasons people were drawn to Jesus was to hear the word of God and to be healed of their diseases. And here we see Jesus' ministry growing in popularity and growing in need. People need spiritual help just like they do today. And they knew that they could find real spiritual help at the feet of Jesus. And so the demands on his life, the demands on his time were increasing as his ministry was expanding. And the same is true for us. The demands of life they increase with time and responsibilities. When I was a little boy, I used to think that I had all these responsibilities and life was tough. And we don't realize until we lose our childhood and we become adults, we become more and more responsible for things to do, for bills to pay. If we get married and have kids, if we have a demanding job with other people we've got to care for, I remember reading in the book of Ecclesiastes when I was middle school age. Remember you're creating the days of your youth before the days of trouble come. I used to think about when you get in trouble with your parents, it can't be any worse than that, but it can be. And the same is true with our lives. And we all find that the more we take on, the more challenges we take on, we, we're building all these demands and responsibilities into our lives and life gets more and more complicated and that's where Jesus was. And so he withdrew at times to lonely places where he prayed. And the word withdrawal is important. And the word lonely doesn't mean he was lonely or battling loneliness, but the place he went somewhere where he could be alone. The balance of being alone and being with others and being in demand of others. And he met those demands because he took time to pray. And the demands of life require us as disciples of Jesus to withdraw. Withdraw from some things. And sometimes you have to look at your schedule, your calendar and say, you know, that was a, a great day then, but I can't keep doing everything on my calendar. And you withdraw from an event. You withdraw from a party. You withdraw from a committee. You withdraw from something you've been involved in. Or maybe you withdraw permanently or you withdraw temporarily, but you need to withdraw so you can pray and replenish your strength and regain your perspective. When we attend church on Sundays, it's a great time to pray with God's people so that we are ready to face the week victoriously. I point that out because sometimes people are always trying to get us busy praying. If you aren't careful, even spiritual life, if it becomes a duty and routine, it's going to make you busy, and that's not what we're called to. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Even God only asks us for one day out of seven, and sometimes even as Christians and involved in the church, we get so busy doing so many things, we think that's spirituality. Sometimes you've got to withdraw from some of the things you're doing that are good things. And people think, well, I went to church, and we worshiped, and now I've got to read my Bible for hours every day and pray. That's not spiritual life. And praying, one of the best times of prayer is when you come to the house of God. 
You're withdrawing from the world. You're withdrawing from normal activities. We're in a sanctuary together. Perhaps you're online and we're devoting that time. And I encourage you to be consistent, whether you're on campus or you're watching online, to be consistent in your life. This study is a time to withdraw from what you were doing. To share the Word of God for a few minutes, to pray and seek God's face. We regain our perspective on life in the Scripture and in prayer. We refresh our strength when we pray and when we read the Word of God. And that's the third reason Jesus prayed, because He shared our humanity. He knew what those demands felt like, and so He withdrew to a lonely place where He prayed. And maybe only prayed for a couple of minutes. The longer you pray does not make prayer more powerful. It's the fact that you pray, that you took time to be with God. I don't know why people try to equate the amount of time they pray with the results of prayer. Jesus never taught anything like that. In fact, the one prayer he gave us, the Lord's Prayer, is one of the shortest prayers ever, and it covers everything. That's a works righteousness approach to prayer, that you've got to pray a long time to get great results. That's not true. And it doesn't tell us that he prayed a long time, that he knew to take some time off. You pray whatever time you need to pray to feel better. You pray whatever time you need to pray until you felt like you've opened your heart to God. Don't regiment your prayer life, just like you shouldn't regiment conversations with people you love. It's a conversation. But he found that in those intimate moments with God alone, he could replenish his strength. The fourth reason Jesus prayed was to make good decisions. We make decisions every day, some important ones and some unimportant ones. But when it comes to the important ones, we need, like Jesus, to pray. The scripture tells us here in the Gospel of Luke, one of those days, Jesus went up on a mountainside to pray. And he spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. Luke chapter 6, verse 12 through 13. Prayer helps us to slow down in the decision-making process so we can hear from God. So Jesus went up on a mountainside to pray. This is at the beginning of his ministry. And he spent the night praying to God. That doesn't mean he stayed up 12 hours straight praying. He went on a camping trip and he prayed throughout the night. I point this out because people think that prayer is just an ongoing barrage of words to God. Jesus called that praying like a pagan, like people who had no sense of God, like the way people would pray to an idol. In Matthew chapter 6 in the Sermon on the Mount, before he taught the Lord's Prayer, he said, when you pray, don't keep on babbling like pagans who think they'll be heard because of their many words. And I'm astounded at how many Christians think They're going to hear from God and their prayers are going to be more powerful if they have more words. When Jesus said, don't keep praying like pagans with people that have a sense of who God is, who think they'll be heard because of their many words. Many words don't make your prayer more powerful or effective. And just because Jesus spent the night praying doesn't mean he stayed up continually with nothing but a barrage of words. No, he was on a camping trip. He went alone. Maybe he came, got up at different times and prayed. Maybe he got the answer the first time he prayed and slept the rest of the night. The point is, he took time in this strategic decision before he appointed these apostles to pray. And he had a dedicated time of prayer. In fact, he spent the night praying. He took more time away for this important decision. He needed to get this decision right. And when we take time to pray, we're facing a big decision, a job change, getting married, taking a, the medical advice of a doctor. It could be own and own so many big decisions, where to invest your money, how to raise your kids. There are, there are a lot of big decisions we face that have long-term consequences for us. Then we need to take time to pray. Prayer slows us down in the process so that we don't make a quick, impulsive, erratic decision just based on our emotions or or worse, what everybody else is telling us to do. Just because you can get three people in your life to tell you that this is what you ought to do. You're the one making the decision. You should never do what other people tell you to do unless it's your, uh, your parent and you're a child and you should obey them. 
You should never do what other people tell you to do. You should do what you decide to do because you're the only one who's going to live with the consequences of your choice. The people who are telling you what to do aren't going to live with the consequences of your decision. You are. And prayer slows you down in the process to get it right. That's how good decisions are made. And prayerful decisions are always better decisions. Even if you're impulsive or spontaneous, you feel like you know what you want to do, that's great. But take time to pray before you act upon it because you may have a change of heart. Your emotions may shift. You may have a different perspective on it. You may even get some counsel and you weigh all of that together. Prayerful decisions are better decisions. Now, there's one other thing I want to point out about this prayer night that Jesus had before he selected the 12 apostles. They were all called disciples. The disciples are suited, but these 12, it says he designated them apostles. And the word apostle means one sent with a particular purpose. So these are very strategic men in his leadership team, the most important. There's one other point I want to make about praying about your decisions. Prayerful decisions aren't perfect decisions. Now, the tragedy of the 12 is seen in Judas Iscariot. It tells us at the end of this story, after it names the 12 apostles, the Peter, James, and John, and all the others that he called, the last one it mentions, it says, Judas Iscariot, who, quote, became a traitor, Luke 6, verse 16. So he didn't start off as a traitor, but over time his heart was misled by wrong influences, by the wrong motives of his own heart, and he became a traitor. My point is, just because you pray about a decision, you make a good decision, there are other people involved in those decisions. Things may shift over time. That doesn't mean you made a bad choice. I mean, what are we to assume here that Jesus prayed all night, that he spent time as the son of God and he appointed 12 apostles and one of them became a traitor? Now, Jesus made a good decision, a best decision. He's the son of God. And yet in human experience, People make other decisions. They make changes. Things change over time. Don't go back to every great decision you made and because some things have gone off the rails now or things didn't work out, you're, don't look back. And this is a great lesson that even though Jesus chose 12 and the word became as important, it happened over time. When Jesus made the decision, it was a good decision. It was the right decision. It was a prayerful decision. But over time, Judas became a traitor because life continues to unfold. Life changes. Things around us change. But the best decision you make is going to be the prayerful one. And that's why Jesus took time to pray. That's why you and I need to take time to pray for these great decisions. And I want to end today on that point and pray with you about any great decision that you are facing. And then we will continue on in our study of the prayer life of Jesus as we learn to pray with purpose. Are you facing an important decision in your life today, your marriage, your career? Are you facing some personal issues? You got an opportunity, you're not sure which one to take? Let's take time with Jesus, and I'm going to encourage you to withdraw. Maybe go on a camping trip in your own way in some way. Spend some extra time to begin to hear from God, to make sure that you are making the best decision that you can make. Let's join together. Father, I pray today for every person who's facing an important decision in his or her life. Your word tells us that if we lack wisdom to ask you, you give generously without finding fault. It will be given to us. And so I pray for them today that you'll give them divine wisdom for their decision, lead them in the perfection of your will for their life. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me today. What an amazing study this is, as we're learning how to pray with purpose. Share the study with others. Get as many people as you can to, to subscribe to our podcast, the sermon podcast, and to listen to the Dig Deep Bible studies and share the Word of God with them. Make sure you get the Mount Perrin app today. We need everybody to get the app, download it in your phone, and let's stay connected. You'll get a lot of the great ministries that Mount Perrin offers on the app. See everything that's going on. You can support the church, and I'm going to ask you for your gracious and generous financial support as we together make an investment in the ministry that God has given to us. Thank you so much for all you're doing to support our ministry and our outreach around the world. I'm looking forward to seeing you and your family this Sunday in church for worship. God bless you. Have a great day.